What's up, y'all? In this section of the Residential Locksmith Starter Series, we are once again talking about Yale, and that is with Yale rim locks and or Yale Jimmy Proof, which has pegs with the strike that go in there, and there's a bolt that shoots up into them. This is the 112, and we're going to use this as an example to get off the door. These have a super heavy-duty bolt. There's tons of cheapy, quote, cheapy rim locks that are out there, but nothing has ever been made besides that's very similar to this. This is like literally the heaviest duty one that you could get. And it is in fact a double cylinder. So we're gonna talk about how to get it off the door and rekey it. It could also just as easily be a spring latch or a dead latch in this case, which dead latch, just like on a regular doorknob. That's supposed to be pressed in and will keep you from shimming it. Uh, most of these are going to be some turn on the inside because having a double cylinder would be a little bit inconvenient, but I have seen them out there. The one thing that is kind of difficult to deal with and is why we're using this is because some of the Yales, the 112, I believe they call this the 112 and a quarter. Nobody ever, the 112 is the thumb turn version. The double cylinder is 112 and a quarter, but they, they came with what's called security screws or non-removable screws. And they're basically like a big wide Phillips head or a flat head that's got slants cut in it. If you look really close right there, you can see it's got little slants cut in it. So when you go with a flat head screwdriver to try to take them off, what happens is it rides up that angle of the security screw and it won't let you unscrew it. So there is one easy way, easier anyway, way to deal with the ones on this one in particular. If you run across them with uh, more of a countersunk head, like these would have been countersunk. Whereas these, you can see, you can see where I'm going with this. These heads are exposed. So while there is a screwdriver Where'd it go? Where'd you go? Here it is. While there is a screwdriver that is made to deal with these guys, it's got this weirdo little tip on there. It looks like two posts. Well, it is two posts sticking out. The theory is, is you could take that and press in, and you have to press in really hard to get it to bite. And it's supposed to grip a little bit better, but it is it's not it's still not the best thing you also see these on bar doors or security doors where uh they the frame is put in you'll see those slanted heads and also in bathrooms because bathroom fixtures people want to steal the screws anyway let's take this off the easier way and the one thing that i use for that the one thing that is worth its weight in gold or the gold that you spent you buying this $60 pair of pliers is the parallel head. If you set it just right, you can come in here, you can grab the screw just like that. And careful not to scratch the edge, especially if it's in pristine condition like this. But almost always you can grab the head of the screw just like that. And very slowly get it unscrewed. Now on hollow metal doors, what I would recommend doing is they came with four flathead and four security screws. So almost always you're gonna find a flathead or two on it. If you have a hollow metal door, which these were popular to put on in like the 70s and 80s, is I would tighten down this screw. And it may not hurt to do it on any door you run across because you know you can unscrew that. So if you tighten this one down, if we tighten this one down, what that does is it frees up those heads a little bit more. Uh, I already know because I drilled the screws on this that it is not gonna work with the security driver, but you may be able to, especially on a metal door. Once you break that, you may be able to use that security driver to get these screws the rest of the way off. So we're gonna fast forward this.
Okay, once we get those guys taken care of, then we can do the other ones that are just flatheads. No big deal there, except for the fact that they're flatheads. Uh, if for some reason the flathead was stripped out, then just do the same thing. But let's go ahead and get this off the door. Careful not to let your screwdriver slip and hit the door. Today we're using the Vessel 256-100 orange ball end. All right, once you get it off, don't do that because your screw could be sticking through. And what, what we just did was scratch up the customer's door just like that. You, you don't want that to happen. I'm being super sloppy here and you are not to be that sloppy. Be very careful while you're taking these guys off. Because uh, you don't want to scratch somebody's door. All right, now, once we get to the inside, you can see here that I have added the stabilizer screws. If I can find the video, I'll put the link up here. This is the best thing to do with rim cylinder plates to keep somebody from shoving a screwdriver in here. If it starts to get loose, you could possibly shove a screwdriver in there and turn the whole cylinder. And what happens when you have this is no matter how hard you try, this is not going to turn in the wood. So you don't really need long screws to do this. Just a couple of little short ones. A lot of plates also nowadays come with these holes already done. That's what they're there for. So that is one good trick to keep up your sleeve. If you did not see that video, uh, I would do this as soon as you undo this. Yeah, I would say since you're rekeying, we're rekeying this lock, uh, I would come back. I would bring, once I went to my truck to rekey the cylinder, I would then uh, remember, hey, I need to bring a drill bit and a couple of little short screws to fasten that guy. Other good thing about it is you don't have to worry about the plate. You can just take the cylinder off and the plate stays there. We need to briefly go over what is a rim cylinder because a lot of the times I'll see people say, I have a rim cylinder here. That is not a rim cylinder. This is a deadbolt cylinder. Whether it's quick set, whether it's somebody else, it's a deadbolt cylinder. One surefire way to know is the tailpiece, or the part that sticks out, is able to freely turn. That's called basically lazy motion. Rim cylinders, for the most part, when it comes to rim locks that we're talking about, whether they be this or a spring latch, dead latch, whatever the case is, almost always they are fixed. That means that the tailpiece does not move. It literally just stays that way and it's dependent on the key to turn to move. It's a direct, direct drive, I guess you could call it, tailpiece, which is how most rim cylinders come. If we wanted to put a sergeant keyway in this, all we'd have to do would be to peel this, slap this in, break it off where it needs to be because in almost any panic bar situation any situation that requires a rim cylinder it has to be cut just right to work if it's too long it won't work something will jam up the panic bar push bar won't push in it that means that this needs to be cut deeper it may go in fine but what's happening is it's messing with something on the inside so you do have to be very particular about the length of it otherwise something else will jam and it won't work so that's what the brakes are for almost always it only needs to stick out of the hole a little bit but if we wanted to use a sergeant cylinder and be ghetto with the finish we could easily just slap this in the screws are off just a hair from the yale brand but they're practically the same worst case scenario is just use your break off screws these are cut out in certain areas to be broken off if you're using it on a thinner door you would break these shorter uh, and when you could do that usually with those i'll use uh i still use my cutter you know the best electrician tool for a locksmith video but we are not talking about any of this sergeant we're talking about yale before we go though i will mention even though it is almost always fixed the ilco version of the rim cylinders do come with a lazy motion tailpiece which does turn and is necessary in certain brands of panic devices almost always that that's a uh that's just a panic commercial version of a panic device that's requires a quote lazy motion like that 
So let's get these out of the way and get on to learning about this Yale. Basically with the Yale, you've got two different styles of clip rump clips that hold the tailpiece in. This kind that slides out or this kind, which is the worst kind. You can see this one has a big footprint and plenty of room to drill. Uh, holes in the bottom but this is that style and this if you're familiar with sergeant uh, rings this is just an expandable ring that holds this in these are the worst ones to deal with but i believe that's what they're using nowadays uh, so if you're familiar with the sergeant versions of these basically you have to spread them and what i like to do is i'll get a uh, little flathead here and uh, get it, start getting it spread open just enough to possibly get a retaining ring pliers in. So if I opened it up enough, that's not enough. What I'm gonna have to do here is just basically grab my flathead. Let's get this off because it makes it hard to do and push. See how we just kind of flexed it out of the way there. There's your tailpiece. Uh, and you kind of want to do it equally. So we're going to flex that side, that side. Horrible, horrible retaining method. But it, I mean, I guess is effective. It just, let's just say for Sergeant, I, this is one of those Sergeant parts that I do keep on hand because uh, of fear of it breaking. For uh, the this guy, which is, yep, the one we had on the door, you have a little clip. Basically what you do is grab your tailpiece, move it over to the left. We can see how it clips in right there. So I'll take my face cap pliers. You don't have to do automotive to get good use out of these guys and push it. It may not go all the way, so you may have to tap that tailpiece over a little bit and then you can kind of push it the rest of the way and then hopefully yank it out. Be careful because one, if you're holding it right here and you yank it out, that little tooth will grab you and it doesn't feel good see there we go let's just walk it the rest of the way out maybe yeah we'll grab a screwdriver to finish it there we go it just slides out there's an opening on one side there that it goes back in uh, that's it for the rim part of it but let's take a look at the actual block that we have to rekey because it is double cylinder so we're going to put it up put it down flip it i'm sorry so we got a screw right there and grab our phillips screwdriver which we have one right here take this one screw out now when you're taking this apart you always got to watch kind of what you're doing how it goes together i'm going to flip this out of the way and we can see that this is attached to that and if you kind of look in line with it you can tell that this part really needs to go back in there so if you put this back on and it's like way over here then it's not going to work right so when you're putting this guy back together you do have to remember that okay so that guy looks like it goes into this hole and it does so when you're putting it back together you just have to make sure that it flips down into that hole so it does what it's supposed to so just fyi now we're going to go ahead and pull this guy out uh oh nope now we're going to go ahead and unscrew this guy it uses a little bit of tiny screws so i don't think that's going to be small enough let's go a little bit smaller yeah there we go we're going to take this plate off now remember how this plate goes on. We see the bottom of the keyhole is on this side. And you see the bottom of the keyhole there. It's very, very important to do this because the key has to do something when you're putting them back together. So we take these two screws off. Almost too big for this driver too. These are actually kind of long little screws too. Oh, come on now, Jason. <laughs> OK, 
Okay. Let's get those guys out. Remember which way it went on. And uh, now we are going to go ahead and pull this out of the way. We can move this. And that lets us flip this forward some. Yep, I'm going to remove that. Uh, and it's easiest to just go ahead and take this out, honestly, to put it all back together and to get to it. So just take it out, lay it down, remember kind of how it went. And uh, now we're, we're there. We're retained. So, you know, we've already unscrewed it. That was the retainer. So time to shim shim a -roo. Shim trim. Go. So then get our shim and pull it out to the three position, just like that. I feel, I think we went past three right there. Mm. Oh, there's two. We should just be able to wiggle one out. Bam. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. All right, let's grab a hollow follower. Put it up against that and just run it through. And there's our short little three pin plug. As always, check your top pins, make sure they're okay. Oof. Yep. 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 We're good. We're going to key it to this only original Yale key. So we're just going to steal it out of that cylinder. What do we have there? Ooh, one, one, three. All right. That's different than what it is now. So. Uh, Yale 1, we'll put the chart up here again, is 201, looks like it, uh, maybe 0, it is 0, 2, 183, excuse me, so uh, 1, 1 is not a good combination, 1, 1, 3 is a descending cut key, so this would not be that great of a key combination to be using, and then we're going to go 2, so it would be 0, 0, oh, nope, 0, 0, 3, which is 240, Yep. And uh, run this guy back through. See, there is a little bit of a gap between them, and I always caution about that. But the one good thing about this gap is it's it's got a ramp. So going back through, basically, they're going to ramp right over that. So whoop, 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 whoop. Oh, come on. Come on. Don't, don't prove me a liar here. It's proving me a liar. All right, so we need to shim bridge this one. It's not too hard to do, even though it is kind of tight in here. Let's grab a shim shimaru. See if we can't get that in here. There we go. One, two, three. Good, good. And shim. Just like that. We're going to check our key. Make sure and hold it. Now, time to put it all back together. There is a certain sequence that this has to be done. So, let's put this over that. Uh, let's put this in. Let's move that around. Put this guy in. Remembering which way it was in. Just like that. This is kind of a little tedious to do with these guys. You do have to like lift it and wiggle and wiggle, 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 and lift, 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 and eventually it'll just drop in miraculously. Oh, just, just like that. We're gonna take this guy, and obviously it has to go under that, so it'll lift up, and we'll just push that forward right there. Yep, take our plate, make sure that the opening is at the bottom. Otherwise, it will not work. Uh, we do need to find a way better screwdriver to put these back in. Uh, we can probably use this guy. Let's see. 
kind of hard to get started because of where they are. There we go. Not that screwdriver. Is this one? Nope. Does that have a little flathead? Nope, the flathead's broken. I'll just use this guy. I don't know what fell right there, but something just fell. We're going to get it most of the way in, but still loose so that we can guide this other one in. And just like that. Oh, no, no, no. Don't, don't go anywhere. Come on. There we go. Switch to a little bit bigger tip and check our key. Make sure it does what it's supposed to in here before we put the plate back on. Boom. Just like that. Even though it's a three pin cylinder, it does work. Bump. And boom. So we want to make sure our key is out when we're putting this guy back together. Hold it up. Remembering that your face, your, your divot here has to go into that divot. So we're just going to kind of eyeball it. Yep. Is that, yeah, is that, that's, that's about right. So Get it in. You do have to put this front end first. Don't, and then you can test it with the guy right here. Boom, boom, boom. Looks good. Tighten this screw back down. And you are good to go with this one. Let's go ahead and take this Jimmy proof off because it has a different cylinder as well. And guess what? We don't have to take this guy off because it's just a just a latch. So once you're there, uh, I did uh, did point out earlier. Okay, see, if we have too long of a tailpiece. See how it's not doing what it's supposed to. But if we back that out a little bit, it works. So if it's too long, see how it kept caught right there. Pull it out a little bit. And it works. It has to be just right. If it's even a little bit too long, the key will be catchy. It's interfering with the mechanism in there. All right, let's take a look at this guy. This guy is an interesting one. One of those that uh, is kind of rare. You, uh, This is a, a lockout slide. Basically, to get that to push in, you would have to push this down right there and then hold it if you let it go it automatically pops up now what that's for is one common attack back when rim cylinders were a thing is slide hammers that's right there is a uh it's a tool called a slide hammer sometimes this is a pain in the butt to press in too by the way uh, we'll go over that when we're putting it back on the door but uh what happens is you screw a screw into the plug and then you smack it with whoa, pressure, bing, bing. You pull, it's a pull hammer. I don't know, I can't remember what you call them. I have slide hammer, I have two of them. And it yanks the plug out. Well, when you yank the plug out, in theory, they're hoping that the tailpiece will come out with it. So if this was on the door, and you yank out, just like this, boom, happily doing what it's supposed to on the door, uh, I don't, we don't know if this one works or not, but supposedly, boom, you yank the plug out. <gasps> oh, no. You can't stick a screwdriver in there and flip it open. So it's a security feature for ye olden days when people were running around with slide hammers yanking Ford ignitions out of the cars, which was a big thing. All right. Now this one has an interesting little spring mechanism there. And uh, basically you want to kind of look at how this thing is sitting. I don't know if it's right. Ooh, whoa, whoa, sticky. No wonder it didn't work. All right, same theory though, uh, is you have 
So we're going to take this spring, remembering how it went, snap, snap, snap pictures. And uh, do I need the little one again? Oh, no, I don't. I can do this. Same theory, but just a different setup, different kind of plate here. Little bitty tiny screws. Choose the right tool for the job. All right, this guy comes off. It's its own little weirdo mechanism. Uh, and same thing. Now, this one is pretty gummy. So I don't know how we were gonna do with the Shim Shimaru. Let's check a key in it real quick. Oh. Ooh, we may have some trouble getting the, getting this core to turn, but let's give it a go. Mm. Okay, super, super tight. What's going on here? Are we going to be able to even do this? I don't know. Uh, in theory, it is only a three pin, so maybe, maybe be able to pick it. We can't get a shim in there. CLK does make some super thin shims, but they are all in my in my truck, and I don't want to go out there just yet for it. I may have to. Let's try a brand spanking new one. Oh, hey, got it in there. All right, let's see if we can get it apart now. I think I just went past two or three there. Maybe a four pin. We'll know in a minute. Boom. Got a new shim going now. All right. Uh, this one has, looks like a flat back, so it shouldn't be any problem. Oh, it is a four pin. Look at you. And uh, here's one reason why Yale locks sometimes are pretty easy to, uh, to pick. Let's take a look at this. Look at those pins, y'all. Original pins. They are not upside down. They are that way on both sides. That makes these guys, if you have to pick an original Yale and it has these pins, this makes this a lot easier to pick because of the shear line being, having ramps, basically. That's, uh, that's what that's all about. Uh, for this one, let's go ahead and code cut a key for it. We're going to use some space and depth keys. Uh, where are my Yale space and depth keys? So we're just going to do that. And uh, this is one reason I have space and depth keys around, so that you can just decode one real quick. Uh, okay, so is that going to be two or is it going to be three? I would say... Two sticks up. This pen looks a little bit more worn down than the other one. Alright, so it looks like five something, five. Say five three three five. Five three three five. Let's give it a go. Just uh, we just had to cut a key by code after I took a lock off of a toolbox on the back of a car. So I gotta switch the wheels here. Uh, 14 MC. We're gonna code cut this with the Yale card. It uses. For the most part, all Yale use 0 .9, 19 thousandths spec uh, Yale large pin, and it is 0 .19 thousandths, so that's 
gonna be your chart that you use. Let me go grab a Yale key. Always use original Yale keys. Five, three, three, five, or five, two, two, five. <laughs> Looks like we were off. So that would be six right there. Let me go change that. All right, did we get it at that time? Yeah, we did. Check your top pins. Maybe have to use a sham. Uh oh. Probably should have used a sham. All right, we're gonna drop the front pin. Front two pins, because we didn't shim it. Oh no, Jason. Back that off a little bit. Springs are still good. So let's see if we can't get this back without hurting anything. Kinda hard to do since you got all this weight that you have on you. Weight being the weight of the lock while you're trying to hold this thing so boom there's that one and where'd that other top pin go definitely oh no definitely gonna have to sacrifice some okay we lost that one some houdini to make this thing work right for the video this is not a original yale top pin please don't get mad at me yale all right Shum. Let's get this guy through there. Yep, it's always better after you shim one to just leave the shim in, especially when you have these weirdo locks. Okay, right about there. And. And it works because we used original Yale keys. <laughs> All right, putting this guy back together. Let's put this guy in here. Look at this grease built up. It's just icky. So that's one reason why these guys get sluggish is because this old, old grease just gets hardened in there. It's almost always. You're going to have to clean that off with a paper towel. See that? It's just gooey. Now, if you want to coat it with something, I would use like Stratec Lock Shot because it's got a heavy, heavy thing. Houdini might be not, not the ideal final lubricant for this, like long term, because it does need kind of a greasy slide area there so that's, that's kind of icky too so but basically while you're in here clean everything off and it'll work a lot better for the customer boop, 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 just like that and where were we we had uh this guy pretty simplistic actually doop 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 yep little screws all right we're gonna check that still could use a little bit more lube oh yeah much better uh and then we need to need the uh this guy back on them right how does this go like this and just like that just like that 
All right, that's still a little bit greasy, but shh, spray your stuff on there. And then this guy, just like the other one, has a certain slot that it needs to go into. So if you want to do it straight, straight and straight, that should be good, but you do have to make sure that goes on right in that area. It's much more hard to uh, get that lined up. Okay, let's give it a try with the key. Holding the plate on. And we do have to cut the key down. It won't work. So let's go do that. Basically, we're going to grind it off. Uh, I know it's, uh, I have a strong feeling it's going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back on for right now. And then we're going to grind the key. And check it. You could also check it by depressing your lockout slide right here boom all right and uh, giving it a try was just like a Phillips driver that would fit it and locked unlocked locked unlocked we have uh did we shim these and, and we did not oh we still have that to do or do we wait a minute where did that one go crap we did not do these yet did we <laughs> everybody's like jason you think you're done but you're not all right well we got a new shim so we should be able to breeze through this hopefully oh there goes five um four three two and one might as well do this while we're doing it this is actually the one that was on the door so five four three two one turn turn that's a little grabby right there uh yep we're gonna keep this one shimmed over Even though it's not overly necessary on this one. I'm going to dump that. Should have checked the key first. Uh, we know it's 113. So 113. But we don't know the rest of the cuts. Uh, 113. That looks like maybe 2. Or 003 I should say. Ooh, that's a deep fella. Nope. Deeper than that. So that would be 297. yep all right we do have a shim in there but you don't really need it for these cylinders i think we've got a kind of a sticky or a elongated cylinder there uh so this one again we just run it out we don't need a shim and one one zero zero Zero, zero, three, uh, two, and then what was this? Seven, six, six. Two ninety-seven is six. Boom, just like that. Check your top pins. All right, so here we have to get these guys back together. This one is pretty easy compared to that other ring. Uh, basically, we're going to take our angled end find the channel there's a channel on one side and that just goes just like this because it literally will not go the other way so you want to make sure and feed that into that channel as you're moving it along you need to wiggle and keep this straight in there so i'll just again i'm going to use this guy and uh and then squeeze it's pretty easy here squeeze 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 see how it's cocked to the side Straighten it up, and it'll squeeze the rest of the way. Oh, still. Boom. There. Snap together. All one at a time. Check a key. Yep, a little gritty. Oh, this guy. All right. Here's where it helps 
to uh, have gloves. <laughs> have gloves. If you spread it just right, you may not have a terrible time getting it back on. But, yeah, I mean, it's going to be, let's try that side. Oh, there we go. All right, again, we're going to grab this to do this. Perfect tool. All right, do, and then go all the way around. Squeeze the little ends together right here. See it's sticking out a little bit right there, so we need to come over here. Get that around. Bend through, bend through. Yep, got that in. That's good, that's good. Make sure it's secured, especially right here. These are the two most important parts that you want to make sure are squeezed together. And then once you get those together all the way, come to the top and kind of bend the little leg in. Make it really hard for the next guy, which is probably going to be you. Check your key. If the key won't come out easily, that means that's like warped or not sitting real well, but we're good. All right, we're going to slip this through the hole. I've got the key like halfway out, and uh, I'm kind of holding it over here with my fingertips so that I can like move it back and forth. Basically, it's just putting it back on. You took it off, you should be able to get it back on, right? Where's my screwdriver? Holy hell, it's over there on the other counter. Let's use this uh, Weeha, Wera, sorry, Wera number 334 because my vessel's over there. All right, I'm gonna get it tightened down now on a hollow door that collapses the door as you do that. If you have a hollow metal door and it's kind of thin metal, uh, this plug does have kind of a problem. Remember some of this stuff that I'm doing these uh, videos on is, is actually stuff that's come off doors before. This one is just really stiff. Uh, if you have a really stiff one that was not really stiff before you put it on the door, you might want to loosen your screws up there and make sure, but in this case, it's really stiff just because the core, I believe the, uh, the cylinder itself uh, has something going on with it. That could be corrected by taking it out, taking all the pins out, chucking it up in a drill and running it through sandpaper. All right, now like I mentioned before, this cannot stick out a certain amount. If it was any longer than this, when you put this guy on, it's gonna interfere with the operation of it. So basically, on the back of these guys, you've got this arrow. And then on the back, there's always this little dot. You see that dot? That dot goes with the arrow, that's the timing. So basically, when you turn a key a full circle, boom, and then stop, that's 360 degrees, that dot will always be with the arrow. So when you're putting it on, it's got to be pretty much just like that. Come in here, guide this. I always have the key in there so that I can like wiggle the key around. I, I can't see because the camera's in the way. Boom, just like that. And uh, tighten it down. Now, if we were using this guy to put it on, uh, yes, you do have to press the lockout slide. So we would have to press this with a screwdriver or something. You usually have to use something. Okay, hold it in. And again, got it in there. Just like that. Uh, the, the, hole, the hole's different there. So I'm not gonna put this one in, but you can see how it works. Turn the key. 360 or on this one it's just a quarter turn so quarter turn boop locked and then quarter turn the other way to three o'clock unlocked and that snapped shut but we're not using that one we're using this one so what you do always always is use your two flatheads presuming you had two flatheads you uh you're going to want to use those because you want to you put the non-removable ones in last. 
if you use the non-removable and tighten them down and for some reason the lock just doesn't work it's, it's sticky or something and you have to take it back off guess what you've got to do the pliers thing again so basically we're going to use the two flatheads to mount it tightly just like it would be on the door if these two are lined up then your other two should be lined up as well We're actually putting this in the two slots where the non-removable were. It's okay, they're the same exact screws. All right, so tighten that down, tighten that down. You may have to loosen them again, but may not. So there we go. And then your inside, which is against fire code almost everywhere, just to point that out. And junk. All right. Non-removable screws. They easily screw in with a flathead screwdriver. Way easier than unscrewing. So now it may be easier to actually go ahead loosen these a little bit to get these to go in depending on what what size driver you're using there this this where is actually not the right size driver for this screw so it's and i'm not left-handed so i'm just going to go switch to my right hand here Ooh, that's gonna be fun to take back off Tight going in, gonna be terrible coming off. The stuff I do for y'all for videos, cause I will have to take this back off one day. Careful, careful. So there you have it. Mm. Now that you got them all tightened down, check it again. Hope like heck it works. So if you have any questions or comments on either one of the two Yales, post them in the comments section. I'll try to help you as much as possible. These almost always use the Y1 keyway. I think these are the only way these, these particular ones come, but there are the sectional Yale keyways and some of the oddball stuff, but almost always you're gonna get this in the Y1 keyway or the 999. Thanks for watching. We'll catch y'all next video. Two things to point out first. Uh, while it may seem like a great lock in that you can just drill this one inch and a quarter hole and the four support poles, the hardest part about the installation is dealing with these big old wampin strike plates you have to cut out a large hunk of door this is a permanent thing once you do this you have to cut out the molding to make these guys work so in this case we'd have to draw a line here cut this molding down because it needs to sit just like this for the door to work so this molding is in the way which means you have to cut now nowadays it's not as bad because we have the vibrating saws you know we have a lot of a lot more options than you did back in the day typically that was done by hand chiseling but because you've got rounded corners if you use a hand chisel or anything really it's really hard getting this nice clean corner and getting it to sit smoothly in that cutout because normally it's cut and then cut and you've got this rounded corner and that makes for a very problematic install uh, without using caulk or something. All right, so remember this guy and our key would not go all the way in. It's almost all the way in. I cut a seven cut at the tip. But if you think, hey, I just need to cut a four pin key and grind off that entire tip, well, we, you would be mistaken because you have to have the tip of the key to activate it. That means that last cut always probably 
has to be a eight or a nine. Oh, it just went in all the way there. That was close. I wonder why it did it there. Oh, ooh, we spun it around too many times, didn't we? I can actually mess up the lock. There we go. I know wasn't working earlier. Huh. Oh well. So don't make the mistake of cutting down that fifth cut because it won't activate the lock at all now. So that means you are safe to use this key as a five pin key on your run cylinder.